so people are listening, so let's do a roll call. Do you want to start, Marcia? Council Member Martin. Uh, Mayor Pick. Council Member Diana Grist. Council Member Sean McCoy. Council Member Yavro. <laughs> Council Member uh, Robert Gis will, uh, will be absent tonight, and Council Member uh, Hedabo Ferry will be here shortly. So um, <clears throat> we're just going to give updates on boards and commissions and uh, talk about whatever you want to talk about. And then uh, after that, I want to bring up the Juneteenth because I have some concerns. So I'm just going to open it up to uh, uh, liaison reports. Mm -hmm. You want to go, Marcia? Yes. Um, first names only, by the way. Oh, OK. Yeah. How much? Oh, <laughs> Um So I guess the two things that are, uh, are going on is um, the, that the um, Airport is having an air show. It's not for a while yet. It's mm -hmm. in, it's in September or <coughs> October. Um, enough time that the exact date, even though it's already nailed down, I can tell you that later. But after having to miss quite a few for several different reasons, um, they really seem to have gotten their act together. Um, they are reaching out to the aerospace firms in the area. And here comes Susie. Hi. Hi, Susie. Hello. Hello. How are you? Um, and uh, you know, a, a variety of different planes. They're hoping to have an electric training plane, although that's, I think that's not confirmed yet. But it should be a, a lot to see. And the, the board is, is working well to you know contribute with the, vol with the volunteers without violating any laws, and um, so I'm I'm really excited that that's going to happen. First year I was on council, um, or the first full year I was on council. They had an air show, uh, and it was great. Um, you could climb on the airplanes and you know mess up your their paint job with your gravel in your shoe and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, this one this one should be amazing. And that one, 2018 one was, I believe, the last one they had. I think so, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yeah, they, they really only have them every two or three years anyway for budgetary reasons and volunteer recruitment reasons and all that stuff. So yeah, we've missed. It'll be, a, it'll be a good thing, and I hope we have great news about the airport to energize that event. Um, nothing, I don't think anything special is going on other than that. You know, everybody's just doing their stuff. Okay. Um, I have, we'll let Susie get settled. Yes. yes. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, I'm on the asset forfeiture committee with uh, the mayor. We have had nothing so far, but I just want to say there's been some things in the private sector that have come up, so maybe we'll get called up for that at some point. Um, Longmont Economic Development Partnership. It's been an uh, interesting meeting. We talked about the uh, House bill, what is that? Um, 1013? 1013. So, or 1313, something. Yeah. Okay, one about transportation. And uh, they're interested in participating and you know, taking a position on legislative issues. So, there was some discussion about that. I believe uh, the vote was to support it. And then the North I 25 coalition, that came up also, and the vote was to not support it until amendments came through. So, mm -hmm. interesting different perspectives. Diane, what were their objections that they wanted to mend it out? For you know, I was afraid somebody was going to ask me that question because <laughs> there was quite a list. And so I was saying, I'm not going to remember all of this. Um, but the concerns are um, the time of commute is one of them. So I guess that would go to the speed of the train. I don't know that the, that, that can be amended, but um, maybe a more defined uh, Path and where stops would be would be helpful. 
Um, but it's the North I-25 co coalition, so they're also working on the bus staying at the same time. So they're comparing, you know, is the train going to be more advantageous to that? So that's basically what they're looking for. There was a, a short list, if you want. You know, some of it was kind of detailed. Just curious. And not something that I necessarily was read into. And I'm about that. So, um, so um, they'll be supportive with certain amendments. Um, the visit long Law, we uh, reviewed our our CEO. She got high marks. Um, they're still planning the climbing competition in February. Um, when you think about it, in August, that's only six months away. We're hoping that the micro transit will be very available then and to have maps so that people that attend that can participate in all the businesses within Longmont. Um, to see, we meet tomorrow, so we're actually going to meet <coughs> and then we're having an orientation for new board members because we also took on some staff as um, consultants with Visit Longmont. So. And then um, the mayor and I are on the fire and police pension boards too. And what has been interesting about that, we. We met back in February, but the city contracts with a, a third party that gives us market information. And one of the things that I keep coming back to is out of all the that the Federal Reserve has done to control inflation, in, in their graphs that they gave us, the only two things that have been affected have been automobiles and fuel, you know, energy, so like mostly <coughs> gasoline, in terms of bringing down the price. And um, so um, I, it just, I just keep coming back to it and in discussing with, you know, Longmont Economic Development about business situations with supply chain and with some of my clients also. Uh, back in the 70s, they, um, when it was persistent inflation, they called it stagflation. Um, you know, it's kind of a funny name, but um, having nothing to do with male deer, but stagflation. <laughs> And or single men. Yeah, <laughs> egg parties. Um, but what's interesting about that, I guess, is at this time in the year, after April 15th, everybody's kind of reviewing their budget and considering, you know, their purchases for the next year and, and um, how are they going to manage expenses. And at the same time, I've, and maybe you all have received some constituent concerns about Oh, the newest one was uh, a fee that uh, Next Light imposed on someone that put their service on hold. And, um, you know, all these little things add up to maybe a hundred more dollars per month for a household. So one of the things that the city can do, looking back at when there was a period of stagflation, one of the things the city can do is hold the line and not react to the market. This is something that the city and the government can can provide. Where the market is being very you know, heavy, and there was even some heard recently is that someone did not get their delivery of diet Pepsi. <laughs> Isn't that an odd <coughs> thing to be short on supply? <laughs> and the thing is, did they bring that to you as a council person? It was uh, yeah, it was a business. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. And they said, you know, we just haven't been able to get our, our Diet Pepsi um, delivery. Get on it, Diet. <laughs> get on it, Diet. There is some, and we've had this conversation <laughs> about oh. supply chain. There yeah. is some withholding mm -hmm. until the price. Mm -hmm you know, achieves whatever they feel like they need to make that in their like budget. Gouging, isn't it? Well, <laughs> is there's a way to say they're adjusting their budget or they're, you know, yeah, there's it's been a year problem in Europe. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. costs that they're trying to cover. And so I'm just saying as a city, we need to always look at, let's just stay level, mm -hmm. not react to the market. That's one of the things we can do for our constituents. Mm -hmm. So. That's all I. That's all I'm involved in. So. Well, um, I uh, the golf board was uh, uh, canceled last month, and they haven't had the meeting this month. Crab, uh, the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, had their meeting, and they're acquiring some land up near Button Rock, 
um, some logical locations to, to kind of keep that area uh, more controlled by uh, uh, Longmont, which is, I think, probably a good thing, and it's a good purchase of, of, of uh, land and, and keeping it uh, uh, for the open space purposes, and that's a location that you know is pretty logical. Uh, then uh, the uh, Longmont Public Media we met last night. It was short. Uh, we uh, are working on uh, more of uh, some bylaws and rules. We're trying to. Uh, this board uh, has got a couple of folks that haven't shown, so we're trying to get some uh, some uh, more fresh new faces on the board. Expand it to about seven, and then my capacity would be probably a, more of a uh, non-voting member, uh, uh, like the other boards <coughs> that many of us serve on, which is probably a good thing because they already have a financial board, mm -hmm. and so we don't need two. And particularly uh, when they have a contract with the city, I think it's probably uh, wise for us to have a person there. Uh, you know, kind of the, but not necessarily somebody who's who potentially could affect their financial status since and then they you know maybe say well that was the city's uh, heavy influence from the city council member or something like that so it's probably wise to uh, not have us as voting members uh, in that sense so they're trying to get seven uh, members total and then a council member and then they'll have uh, uh, Sergio or some surrogate or Sergio there for uh, to, to, to run the meeting or to be the kind of staff liaison. Did sort of. I miss anything on that, Marcia? Not run the meeting. There yeah, not run the meeting, but, but be, uh, the meeting. be there to kind of be a uh, staff support. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then the last one, why I left it to last, is the Consortium of Cities. They had uh, some interesting uh, uh, folks to talk about uh, their uh, how they're dealing with some of the uh, uh, sharps and other things that uh, uh, they're finding and uh, that uh, uh, they're putting on all their county buildings and everything. Uh, and a couple of things that they were doing in regards to, they were providing people because you're much more likely apparently to have um, a very serious overdose from injection uh, than you are from if you smoke, uh, uh, you know, things like uh, uh, crack and, and other things like that. And so they're providing actual pipes and ends in case people are sharing them, that sort of thing, which by everybody's eyes, uh, you know, in all these cities are like going, what? You know, their eyes got super big. But they said our, our data uh, and the research that we've done and everything says, this is probably safer to give them, uh, provide them with that than to provide them with the needles uh, and everything. So that was uh, uh, kind of interesting. They showed us the, a box of, uh, of display things. They talked about uh, you know how to get uh, some of these supplies uh, for the smaller communities and, and others. And then the big uh, issue was around uh, uh, the uh, minimum wage issue. And I'll tell you, the smaller communities like uh, Erie, Superior, uh, Louisville, and Lafayette, they keep saying they're talking about it, but like Superior said, we've got potholes to fill, and we've got, I had this little problem in our community, uh, you know, a Marshall fire. So they were really kind of putting it off. Mm -hmm. And so they're, they're, they're putting it off maybe till the summer. Uh, I talked to uh, Sandy, uh, and uh, she emailed me that uh, we might see some sort of update in July. Um, and uh, I, I think many felt it was uh, the issue with that was uh, uh, that uh, uh, we hadn't gotten enough data back. We, we knew what we had done here with the uh, uh, with uh, interviewing some businesses. And of course, many of the businesses, I repeat that, many of the businesses, you know, want, uh, are saying they would just crush us, we'll take our, our business and go elsewhere. But, you know, as I told them there, I said, this is the market. The market is long run. They're going to wherever. 
out east uh, is, is, I don't think their employees are going to follow them, I told them. And I didn't think their, uh, that uh, their customers would necessarily follow them out that way. And if we implemented a, a minimum wage, you know, progressive minimum wage like we're, it's being proposed, we're going, they're not going to have employees there either because those employees are going to come this way where they're actually uh, from places that are not, uh, you know, supporting minimum wage at that way. So that's, so their argument for it's going to crush us, it's probably not, not likely to be uh, there. What they need to probably stop doing is there, many of them are taking their part of, of, you know, the, what they make, and then they're taking some of their employees part too, which uh, yeah, is, uh, in the form of reduced wages, so that's that's where they need to get kind of filled in there. When they stop stop trying to take <coughs> the employees portion part that should be going to some of the employees, they probably would, uh, in, in a fair and equitable situation, they probably would probably find that they could could uh, uh, not have a twenty dollar hamburger situation or some sort of thing like that. So I don't think that's necessarily absolutely across the board in all cases but there are some what's up oh well, well wait a minute can we have everybody report and then we'll open it up because yeah i just had a question on that topic but if shakita and susie yeah let's open, wait that is then so is that the only one you reported that that was the biggest one okay mm -hmm. Shakita, keep you done with that yeah. oh cool mm -hmm. susie did you want to go i don't want to oh step over you if you want no i just so that's fine you sure yeah okay <laughs> Oh, I came last. <laughs> okay. Um, so last night we had transportation and um, very interesting because we had RTD there last night and um, I can't remember who was the guy was on the board. Eric Davidson. Yeah. Um, he was talking about uh, they were going to support Senate Bill 184, which was funding inner city passenger rail. RT, you know, they're leading, RTD is leading the study um, for that. And also they were opposing House Bill 1447, um, which is a transit reform bill. Um, they said it was, the structure of the bill was concerning to them. Um, he was talking about the long-term financial outlook of, um, you know, for the everything they're programming as far as like the youth is is free for RTD right now. 75% um, is depending on the sales on the sales tax right now. Um, um, the Tabor expiration right now, uh, the exemption for that. Um, refinancing, um, these are like short notes that I took so if you don't understand all of it, I'm sorry. Um, they were saying what's at risk right now is the 40 million they may have to refine through the taper. Mm -hmm. um, one or the other, if they have a new police chief that's been there. The, I didn't know RTD had a police chief. Um, so I was ignorant of that. Me too. Oh, okay. we all. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe new, because they didn't. Yeah, they have a new one. Uh, he's only been there maybe for about a year. Um, they have a problem with retention of drivers due to high level of assaults to employees and increase of drug use and criminal activity. Um, and also they need to train officers. So they're putting a lot of money for the, you know, for the officers um, and also mental health clinicians and uh, de-escalating uh, training uh, for their officers. And um, so, and then also fentanyl use has increased as well. And so um, they're not sure about keeping the youth program, keeping that free for the youth. And I think, uh, board member Wicklin asked how much are they paying the employees because of, like I said the retention rate um, they can't keep the employees and they said they're almost $26 an hour mm -hmm. um, but once they get them through the training they get their CDL license and they're like 
Bye bye. Yeah, so that's the issue right now. Um, and so I asked because they can't even tell us how many youth are actually using the buses. They won't keep the data. They're not, yeah, yeah they don't have the data for that. Um, so I ask, why don't you, for the summertime, like get youth involved, let them paint the buses, have some type of travel program for the youth on the buses. Um, what are they doing as far as um, the unhoused that are traveling on the buses? Mm -hmm. Because youth are, I mean, I'm sure that's a deterrent for youth to get on the buses if the, you know, if the if it's low uh, passenger rate for youth that are not utilizing it. So how are you, if you can't tell us how many youth are using the buses, then it doesn't matter if it's free or not. Mm -hmm. So um, and then they had what's her name start with again. She was speaking about um, Natalie. Yes, she was speaking about. The, the priority, the next priority is having a route going towards the hospital, like Costco area and all of that, by the Walmart. Um, so, but that's priority, they but don't yet they, they don't have a day. <laughs> so anyway, I said what I have to say to them because she just kept referring to everything about Boulder, Boulder, Boulder. And I said, oh, interesting. Um, you know, in our comp plan, we're, we're talking about reducing the carbon footprint and we're talking about electrification and all of that. I said, if I was a new resident coming into the city of Longmont and I'm looking for a place and, and I believe in the comp plan of uh, our goal for, you know, our environmental goal. And I want to be somewhere where I can just hop on the bus. And if it happens to be out there, I can't. I have to have a car if I'm working at the hospital, you know, and I live out west of Longmont. Mm -hmm. I have to have a vehicle to get to work. Mm -hmm. And then you're talking about having a car, uh, an electric car, but where are the, the charging stations? So you all, what you all are doing, and, and I said, and there are no bus routes going up for the high schools either. Mm -hmm. I said, you want to talk about Boulder? I said, they all have buses at their high schools. We don't have buses at our high schools. And then Phil jumped in, that's why we're doing microtransit. I said, exactly. I said, why do we, we're, have, we have to think outside the box. Mm -hmm to do this. And I said, you know, anyway. I said, I understand. I said, we thank you for all you do, but I'm still complaining, just like we get in the emails too, so. Yeah. Good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, and um, let's see. Oh, Sister Cities. Um, everything that's going on with Sister Cities, everything is on plan, uh, on point, I guess, right now. We got our dates for Japan, finally, mm -hmm. um, July um, 14th through the 26th. And so we're supposed to, right now we're trying to, we don't know how much the tickets are. They're probably around 3,000 per person mm -hmm. right now. And it will be nine of us going to chaperones and um, seven students. Mm -hmm. um, in Arapahoe, everybody's practicing, doing their thing. They're each supposed to have a dance that there's an American dance that they're going back to mm -hmm. uh, each location to do their American dance they're trying to practice. Last year, Japan, they did Footloose and, mm -hmm. and it wasn't that pretty. Mm -hmm. So um, if you all know of some um, choreographers, I told them I'm gonna find the one because they're representing the city alone. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, um, that was good. I also want to say I did not make it to downtown Longmont uh, District Association. I mean, our authority. I mean, LDDA. LDDA, because I was at the funeral. And um, but you know, we the hotel they should be closing on that by the end of the month. Um, everything is working on that. Um, what else am I on? I didn't go to the NATO. NATO. I didn't. I wasn't able to go to that. And that's next Thursday, the next meeting. Mm -hmm. And I just want to say the life skills 
was amazing. Um, I did put you and you on there for the um, possible yes. um, collaborating for next year. So they do want to do it again. Yeah. I uh, have a meeting on Friday with the superintendent to see if he's willing to. Uh, he was very supportive of of the life skills fair, and so just making sure he's still welcome. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's why we have the meeting on Friday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> it all comes down. Yes. yes. Exactly. Yes. So. Okay. You ready? All right, Susie. Okay. So um, the. Library was last night, so I'll go with that one. Um, so most, and I noticed that museum and library, it was really talking about recruiting people for the board. You know, people are getting anxious that we're not going to get enough people to fill these these spots. Mm -hmm. So our current chair of the library board is term limited, so she'll be she, you know she'll be done. I think next month's their last, and then June is the new people. So they'll be electing a new chair um, in June. June. It goes through June. 30th. Through June. 30th. <laughs> so, um, and then, yep, so the five, yeah, June is the final meeting with current board members. So um, in the director's report and updates, we just got a chance to see, you know, the, the work that the, the library's doing. I think some of the challenges that they're facing is, um, and people have been, you know, they've been getting some people upset, um, the items are on hold for a longer period of time mm -hmm. because what they've had to do is really cut back on the number of um, items that they're able to, in their collections, mm -hmm. that they're able to, to purchase. So for digital materials, the prices have gone up, so they're not able to purchase more digital materials or copies of a certain book or um, item. And so then when people place it on hold, they're having to wait longer for it to, to come in. So that's, that's been a, a hiccup in what they're trying to, you know, trying to keep it functional. Um, you know, there had been something that the board really wants me to understand and share out with you all is that the trajectory that it's on, it's not really sustainable in the fact that they have a lot of part-time employees um, or they have people who are doing a lot for a community our size. So we're really, you know, we're staffed as the way we were maybe 20 years ago, but the demand and the increase in population is, um, it, it's not sustainable. So uh, last Wednesday, I went to that, so it was on the 10th, the PI, the Padre Simbolo Grados in Educación, their annual celebration. <coughs> and Lillian from the library was there, our outreach coordinator. And she was out there and she's working with families and just getting the stuff done. But it was one person. Mm -hmm. So really to be able to have a team. And so really, you know, just emphasizing the importance of a um, sustainable and well-funded library. And as a teacher, I'm speaking from the heart on that one. Um, so that's, you know, we, we discussed that, um, you know, a point that they wanted to bring to me was, you know, we're in desperate need of funding. And so that's, you know, that's kind of what they wanted us to, to be, to have an understanding on. Um, the annual report um, will be presented to council on April 30th. So they'll be coming at that time too to share um, more about you know, the going on at the, the library and um, outreach and all that. Uh, on May 17th, the library will be closed all day for an all staff training and focusing on uh, trauma informed care, allyship, um, dealing with uh, and coping with microaggressions that are occurring, you know, being in front of the library. And, certain things that you have to deal with within the public, you know, how, how to navigate those situations professionally and also taking care of themselves. So um, that'll be happening on the 17th, I think, is that a Saturday? The 17th, Friday or Saturday? Um, so there, yeah, there was a day where people were Friday. Friday. Friday, okay, that'll be the day that the library's closed all day. Um, and, 
Let's see, they did revise their form for people to submit if they want to have a book or an item evaluated. They did revise the, the form. And actually, as I looked at it from this time to last time, it seems like it's more user friendly and it's, it, it's rather than just people just filling out this whole blanket page of grievances, it's more, um, you know, it's just more itemized. And so people are really, you know, that it will force people to become really clear on what they're trying to get across. It's not a matter of opinion, it's you know, based on these factual pieces that this is why I want this book reviewed. So we had a chance to look at that, um, and that was based on what other public libraries are doing and, and utilizing throughout the state. Um, for the museum, the expansion is um, going as as, um, as anticipated. Closing my street. They're closing your street. <laughs> so they're working on the inner courtyard. It's being graded for drainage and hardscape. Um, and their slab has been poured for the new perform performance pavilion. Um, let's see. So, you know, they're doing, they're still getting donations in. And um, so that's, that's, it's everything seemed like it's coming along pretty well. Um, we discussed you know, revenue and attendance. So it looks like Discovery Day's attendance from February of 2023, they had 896 participants. This time, 1,132. Um, auditorium sales have, have um, nearly doubled from last year to this year. And gift shop sales have increased by um, $1,000 from last year, February, to this year, February. So, you know, they seem to be, seem to be doing well. You know, again, they, they were talking to just concerns about getting board members and having those seats filled. So I know that. And then there was some question <laughs> on, and maybe Don can answer this, around board, current board members. Is it crossing any kind of line for them to go out and promote people applying? So I said no. I know. Best thing but I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I will double check. I will confirm. But I, it seems like you know anybody can. And we say that every time we send out recruitment announcement to secretaries and liaisons. Uh huh. Please forward your board members. Ask them to. And um, yeah. it, I didn't hear it so much at the museum advisory board, but at the library, there was a lot of concern around the uh, the ethics. You know, just concerns about how that language is going to impact, you know, their ability to say anything about. So I think that's where that question came mm -hmm. up. Like, are we even allowed to to promote applying because I didn't know if it would impact? And you know, so they they saw the language. That was library. The library, yes. Okay. And so I said, no, I don't. Um, yeah, it didn't seem like it would cross any you know, ethical, yeah. you know, create any ethical violation for that. So. Um, and then I think the RCAP was canceled last month because of spring break. Like there was a lot of conflict, a lot of people couldn't attend. So we are meeting at the end of this month. And the Arts and Public Places, um, last time they met, we had our Longmont Housing Authority meeting. So I wasn't able to attend, so, but it is this Thursday. So I'll fill you all in on the next. And Youth Council, they had a debrief of the Life Skills Fair, and I think they were working on um, helping applications, filling out applications, and just working with, with youth on those things. So they're, you know, that, that group, when I attend those meetings, it's more like a working group. So I'm just kind of sitting on the side, and, you know, I might answer, at, you know, give them a council update, but that's pretty much it. Is it Youth Council? Youth Council, yeah. They're, they do their, their thing. <laughs> Joan, I forgot something really sexy. Oh, sexy, go for it. That um, Becky Dole yeah. and um, this, um, I don't remember who the consulting people are, and um, we're giving an app. They, it's a pilot program for an app to let, um, let someone know when the train is coming. Mm -hmm. um, so they did a demo last night, uh, a demonstration, so 
it would let you know where the train is, where the train will stop, and um, Ooh, all you have to do is just look and see where it is in the city, mm -hmm. and what time it should be over, when it's moving, what time, so it's pretty cool, it's pretty cool. And so I can't believe I forgot that part, but that's like the best, <laughs> the best part, yeah. Yeah. especially after last week. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, it's a pilot program, and I, I don't know when it will be completed, but Becky Doyle is the one who's leading that because you know her partner was the one who created the that whole app anyway that we got awarded for and all of that with National League of Cities. So, so yeah, great. I know. So, okay, I'll go fast and then you can open it up for questions. Um, so, I'm going to hit everybody. I was surprised that uh, Natalie said that they were working on buses from east to west, I guess, when we've been asking for LX1 to be restored for years, and her say, she says the same thing to me. We're working on it. That's what she said last night, too. About LX1? <laughs> yep. She said we're getting it back, they just don't know when. It's all about resources. Well, it was supposed to be last September. Yeah. And then it was supposed to be December and then January. And it, mm -hmm. You know, I worked with Natalie for nine years now. Well, we're supposed to have coffee so we can have, all three of us can have coffee. Mm -hmm. Are you going to set that up? Yeah. Okay, go girl. girl. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else is working on it. I love it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So we had a, a meeting this morning with the executive committee for FRPR, and we are working on what we know is that we need to move really, really fast. And um, uh, I think that our manager, Andy Carsey, and with these bills, has kind of had a stick poked at him in saying, you're, you're too slow, what are you doing? So we talk, we're getting a, uh, a survey out, a poll, as to what people want. We're working on the ballot language, which is going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of input, because the district has so many different populations in it, mm -hmm. that it's very important that that ballot language addresses everybody, not everybody's needs, mm -hmm. but everybody's ability to mm -hmm. interpret the language. Mm -hmm. And that's what screws up a lot of ballots, mm -hmm. is that people just don't understand them. Mm -hmm. So um, we worked on that. We're also talking about um, the tax. What, what will the tax for these districts be? So the, the SB 184, which is the big bill, um, which basically tells RTD that you need to finish the Northwest Corridor, and it also says that once you finish it from Denver to Longmont, then FRPR takes it over because of the different pots of money that can be used. Um, RTD cannot use federal dollars because they are under transit, not, not federal. So um, FRPR has the dollars. But what the bill is going to do that you're saying that they, do, what was that bill number again? 184. No. Um, oh, 1447. Uh, 1447. Uh, yeah. So I understand why RTD doesn't like that bill. It is a bill to remanage RTD to cut that board down from 15 to 7 people. And um, part of SB 184 says that RTD, CDOT, and uh, FRPR have to work together and either come up with an IGA, that is three-way IGA, mm -hmm. or come up with a transit authority type of uh, deal. Um, the CTIO got through with an amendment, I'm sorry, F, the 184 got through with an amendment that said the original way it was written was that there would be a $3 fee on all rental cars. and. Um, they didn't like that because those dollars are going to go into CTIO, which is a which is a group where our it used to be HUTF dollars. Mm -hmm. It's very confusing, but mm -hmm. they wanted only they wanted all Colorado residents to be out of the uh, rental car fee three dollars a day, mm -hmm. and um, I don't think that passed because everybody uses our roads. But the way the bill was set up was that those dollars were to be used for rail first. 
So there was a lot of pushback on that, and they said the projects that are in place should use those dollars first, and then it should go to rail. So that, you know, that's all got to be worked out. But as soon as, uh, as soon as the governor signs SB 184 and 1447, mm -hmm. um, then Harold and I talked about having a community conversation to explain all of this because it's very confusing and everything I read has a different slant on it so that nobody really understands how the whole thing is going to work. Um, but I, I think it's really exciting and it is going to come whether people like it or not. And I just sent Harold and Phil a document telling instructions or um, ideas on how RTD and uh, Amtrak and BNSF want the train, um, I call it a depot station, it has to be done with, with certain uh, standards according to BNSF. So um, just for fun, and this is what we talked about is that, you know that little red train station that is by the transit station apartments? Mm -hmm. We talked about moving that and using it as the train station because it's historical and it's old and it's cute mm -hmm. and um, adding on to it, of course, but having that be our train station. Mm -hmm. so, the depot li liquor store? No, no, no. The one that is on uh, Emory? The other side, yeah. No, it's not on Emory. It's on sec the first. Other side the side it's on first. It's, it's a by, the, by the railroad track. It's so here's the cheese importers across mm -hmm. the street. Mm -hmm. And it is, and that little red train. So you're gonna have to take a little ride. In yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it's like sandstone. That's why it's red. Right? No, it's just painted. Oh, I thought. Oh. I don't know. So that that is, to be honest, that's what I'm really working on most of the time, um, because the timeline for this has been pushed up to three to five years instead of twenty. So it's like. Whoa, we better get busy and start building this. Um, but again, until the governor signs these bills, there's nothing in stone, and he needs to sign them probably in May. Remind me what bill that was? Uh, SB 184, that just passed both houses okay. with amendments. Um, and 1447 is the one that um, hasn't really gone to committee yet. Okay. It is being uh, hashed out. And I know that RTD doesn't like it. Mm -hmm. One thing I don't like about that bill is that the governor said that he's going to have two or three um, at-large directors. Mm -hmm. But the RTD district is huge. Mm -hmm. And our at-large director mm -hmm. There's no way they can cover that. I think that they should be appointed to a district or to a certain area to represent not yeah, everybody. Yeah, going to be heavy in some area. Yeah, it's going to be really hard. And the other thing I didn't like is that he wants to cut this board down to size pretty soon. We have a lot of historical knowledge there. <coughs> and, you know, um, Eric Davidson is so smart that he's turned that around. We're the only RTD transit agency that um, is not in the red now. And it's taken him four years to get it in the black. You know, it's like when you buy when we bought our house, I wanted to do all kinds of fun things, but we had to replace the water heater. We had to <laughs> fix some stuff. So we put a lot of money into the house, but we couldn't see any improvement. It was still the old house. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I feel about RTD at this point. Mm -hmm. They've made a lot of changes and are working hard. But um, just based upon what Natalie said is why I think it needs to be redone. I'm totally in support of 1447. So that's about it. I'm on the Historical Preservation Committee. We had a meeting and uh, I am at this point learning a lot. So I, I sit quietly and thank them for their input <laughs> because nobody's come to us with a project at this point. So 
Okay, Marsha, you have yeah, some questions. I have, I have questions. Of, it, it seems like it would be good to, to, to discuss minimum wage uh, because, it, you know, the small towns don't have to buy in. We can still have a re regional mm -hmm. um, district. If it's just Longmont and Boulder and Boulder County, mm -hmm. that's good enough. The problem is, is that Boulder County didn't bother to ask certain, when they pushed this through, they didn't ask two of our largest uh, employers in the county, the Boulder Valley School District or the St. Mary Valley School District, what they thought of that. And that seems to me like a glaring uh, mistake on their part not to have done that. But I think there's other things that need to be fixed on this. Uh, it's kind of got some issues. If we're going to do it regionally, then I, there's certain aspects of it that uh, uh, I think should be part of it. Like, okay. but that's just my opinion. Well, so let Marcia so, finish. Yeah, her. thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, uh, I, I think that that uh, first of all, the commissioners are going to be the commissioners. I have stopped having expectations about the commissioners. Um, <laughs> so, um, but. But um, Longmont can pass a minimum wage and, and say, we're with you, Boulder County, and we don't need any help to do that, although I, it would be great if the city of Boulder would do the same thing, right? Um, but uh, I am looking at it from another way, not the logistics of getting it passed, uh, but rather the, the impact on our businesses, because um, pretty much everybody in the chamber hates the idea, but you know when we were in the pandemic and all those businesses were afraid of failing, and we, you know, it turns out that most of the businesses in the chamber have very little clue how to run a business, and um, so uh, you know we had we helped we helped them, you know during the pandemic we had uh, we and the chamber and the EDB and all of that, um, the DDA mostly, I think, um, I helped them with, there, were, there was help to figure out how to do a PPP loan and, um, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. Well, you know, I talked to successful businesses that are not yet huge, and they kind of agreed with me that there are things, there are, you can make fairly minor changes in your business, like if you are a retail business, just making a 10% change in your line of offerings, for example, mm -hmm. um, could rate, if you do it carefully and, and start off selling something profitable with a high margin, um, it can, uh, without changing the character of your business, increase your margins mm -hmm. enough that you can, you only have three employees that are at minimum wage, mm -hmm. you know, you can, that it gives you enough to, keep your business the same shape as before, but pay that higher wage. And it seems to me that uh, that with we, if we could find some city funding and collaborate with the chamber mm -hmm. and probably some, uh, uh, some mover and shaker type businesses, you know, the ones that are, that are run by MBAs or, you know, people with a, a strong uh, investment heritage or whatever, you know, there are people with knowledge in this city, and we could have seminars, classes on, you know, how, how to improve your margins, either, either by finding ways to save or by, um, by changing your, your product line if you're retail, you know, and I'm not that kind of a business person, so I couldn't necessarily come up with 15 examples, but uh, I think that the courses could be developed and offered, mm -hmm. and then the businesses are, are will, at least they will lose their fear and understand that they have a support system. It's not that different than what sustainability does with small businesses mm -hmm. to get them to um, adopt uh, sustainable practices in their business, and they, you know, and they usually end up saving. They just yeah. need somebody to tell them it's possible. So I, I think that's a good idea, but I don't think the city should run it. This would be a good thing to bring to LEDP and I, to um, the chamber. Yeah, I think, you know, because the EDP is for it. They don't have a problem with uh, mostly the, ED, the EDP 
businesses understand that our economy will improve if they if we raise the minimum wage. It's the chamber people that have problem with it. Well, um, so I talked to Claire Levy. We had a coffee, and she said she stated that she was way too early and went way too far with the minimum wage. And um, I told Marta Lochening because she, um, you know, I said my problem with it off the bat is our nonprofits, and. Um, I said I felt really, really bad because I thought as long as I'm the only one doing it. And I emailed Aaron Brockett and he said, no, they're not going to support it. And then Lafayette, Louisville, they all weren't going to support it. So I felt better that, okay, maybe there's something else there. Um, the nonprofits are the ones that I'm concerned about mostly. Mm -hmm. And some of the small businesses, that, because of the family, uh, insurance that the governor has or the state does now and they have to buy into it or at least uh, uh, provide something of their own like we do. Um, they said their costs have gone up because of that and a lot of the nonprofits are not getting grants or donations for two reasons. Number one, a lot of uh, the write-offs on federal income tax came from donations and um, philanthropic type things, but now that it's been raised to $15,000 as a standard uh, deduction, none of those donations count. You have to be a big giver for, mm -hmm. for that to count. Cause like right, so they don't bother giving their little donations that would add up to maybe $2,000. Mm -hmm. um, and um, with the property taxes going up and stuff. So I believe in the minimum wage. Mm -hmm. I just don't think now's the time. Well, and um, right now. Well, I, I've done a lot of thinking about this too, and along with you, and, and I, uh, I think that uh, the, the issue is, is that the big corporations will be able to live with this. They'll be able to, to live with that. And so that's, that's a given. The issue is, is that if that's the only types of business that we want here, that's probably not the case. So small, you know, businesses need to have some sort of support to what uh, Marsh is saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm concerned about not having any tools uh, for localized inflation uh, in the process here. Uh, I, as an educator, I'm a strong believer in some sort of uh, uh, like a certification type of thing where it's tied to it, but that's uh, not in the legislation. And I think that's something that I would like to see because I think if you have to be a first aid certified, uh, you know, and lifeguard trained and everything like that to be a lifeguard, you should be paid a little bit more because you're, you're taking on a bigger, more deep responsibility. If you're a certified bookkeeper, same thing, you're taking on a bigger responsibility uh, Plus, you invest in well, training. But uh, yeah, and so. But I those think people have to be certified to even get the job. Mm -hmm. well, it's yeah. not like you're going to yes. hire a a, a lifeguard who hasn't yeah. gone through. So there. Well, and so some of the more that. low uh, uh, other ones are like you know for food service folks they have to have safe serve uh, training and certification. And if you are selling liquor at a gas station or a grocery store, you probably have to be tip straight to know. Uh, with the new licensing and stuff like that. So there's certain things that... I think that might be Ill Ill illegal. Let's run that past Eugene. We can't get into businesses and tell them that they can't. No, no, no. I think that's find. part of their... Uh, to, to sell liquor, you have to have uh, us. So I think it's part of the liquor license process. But then why... But then they couldn't hire any. My my point is... I think they do no, the training. Do the I think and they do the training. Pay for the training. Just like yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's not our law. It's state law. Well, no, it's right? not our law. Yeah. 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 So, so we would have nothing to do with you. I just think that certified uh, employees should be paid more. And we also have to look for the fact that if somebody's a bookkeeper and they're getting paid $25 now, the, the difference is around $9 that they need to be paid better at those locations. So people would be like, why am I doing this? You know, I, I need to be paid at least higher than somebody doing minimum wage if I'm taking on this deeper role. And so that's that's the only issue I think. I think, though, if we are going to pursue it, it has to be a public vote. 
people have to have an idea around it, not just us going and saying we're going to go ahead and move forward with this. And I think there's some mistakes that the county commissioners realized they made on this, mm -hmm. and they they're going back and going to try to correct. But I think there's it didn't pass in in Fort Collins when it was first presented. It didn't pass in, in uh, Boulder. There's really only one member of the Boulder Council that's really pushing it. Mm -hmm. And so I just don't know if this is where we're at. I, I, I'm, I'm for them in a way, I just don't know. I, I agree, I am well, too. I think we're handicapping ourselves mm -hmm. by not preparing for it, you know, whether it's three years or, or two years or something. I still think that, uh, and I want to correct something that you said, assumed about what I was suggesting. I don't think the city should organize a class. Oh, I thought no. that's where you I think this, No, the city should put money in it and mandate it, but the mandate what? Mandate having such a class. Make sure that it make sure that it exists. Make sure that it's made available, like through the chamber. But I'm saying that the the, the city the city needs to be the instigator and the pusher. But, but not the administrator and not the brains of the outfit because we don't have that kind of expertise within the city. Um, but Okay, just to clarify, who are we mandating it for? The business owners? We're mandating that it exists. Okay. The, business man, the business owners don't have to take it, but they, they should realize that, that if they think they can't ever pay a higher wage, they've got a pro the problem is in their business, not in us, but we're done. Okay. okay. So I do have one really fast question. When Sergio, when LPM and Sergio gave their update, this real fast one, okay. one sentence, he said that they want all of the, uh, what was it called? They the want to increase the, the pay, the PG. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, they want all of that funding really fast. What do you You're think about that? <laughs> I'm just curious. have to prepare. Um, yeah. Whoops, okay. Harold. Wait, yeah, I feel like there's more. Yeah. Or think uh, the money that we get from the uh, franchise fees, I think council's franchise. already given us that direction. Okay. I think what they're wanting is additional funding, which will have to come from the general fund allocation. Okay. I think okay. there's more to it. Is that now. correct, Ellen? He did not He did say... Sounds right to me, but I'd want to go double check. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I feel like that, 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 that warrants a deeper nice. discussion. Yeah. I okay. That. Okay. Joan, I do have something to say about that, though. What? Really quick. Mm -hmm. um, that uh, I told Sergio something different when he asked my advice about making, I said, you know, you're doing that wrong. Like, what would it take? They're not going to have an answer for you. No. You should be setting out some goals, that's the, some concrete, measurable goals, and then challenge the council to say, if we achieve this goal, would we, um, could we get extra funding from the council both to support that goal and to uh, support the next goal? So in other words, he should be asking for something concrete and measurable instead of just saying, please, sir, may I have some more? Yeah. So, so I, I agree with that. Anything about it. But I look at it differently. This is a, this is a business. If he is saying we're going to offer more under your contract, and then that's going to cost more. And then we would have that discussion. But just to have more money to increase the other side of their business, mm -hmm. that's what I'm thinking of. So come back with the contract and tell us, do we need any more? That's a conversation they need to have with operations because we don't know what that contract would involve. We can weigh in on this, um, but then on bird watch and then on my job quick. Bird watch? Yeah, bird walk, as you know. <laughs> um, when he asked what would it take, I actually responded to that because what I noticed is that the the paid memberships are going up, but they are maybe one percent more than the total. So it needs to be a higher percentage of the whole. So there's a measurable goal. Yeah, except and, and that, that would and that would provide more funding because they are making if more they money have a, a, a a large increase in paid membership, they don't. Need he's he's a little concerned that the and Marcia can speak to this too that uh, they're dealing they're competing with the Tinkerbell uh, a little bit. So oh, that's okay. 
I, I did have a conversation about LPM with some of my uh, clients, and some that aren't even my clients, but just businesses. And the thing, the truth is that um, small business owners work 60 to 80 hours a week. So doing it themselves is very hard for them. They really want to be able to pay a student maybe at LPM to do it for them, but they like the idea and the pricing is good at LPM for a small business to utilize. So my other suggestion for Sergio would be impact businesses in town. That would be very helpful to the city. Oh, that's a good idea, I think. If, if what you mean is, is LPM should have product offerings that it staffs and then, and then business or, bus or training. volunteers, because yeah. you don't have to be a student to volunteer. No, yeah, yeah. It's all seem young to me. So. <laughs> <laughs> me too. You're all young. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but anyway. Um, but yeah, so it's the but, same but, idea. We don't have to. Yeah, yeah choose one from column A and one from column B instead of instead of having to be do all the creatives yourself. And then I'm gonna throw out for the small businesses. Not every business is meant to have a large margin product. A good example of this is Walmart, and I hate it when I talk about Walmart, but they are, their whole business model is built on volume with small margins. Right, but Walmart's not a small business either. Mm -hmm. Because they're very success successful for it, with it. And another organization that also works on small margins are stockbrokers. I know. So you're thinking, well, there's actually a lot of money in small margins because of both of those examples. Well, I, uh, yeah, and it's not that small margins are the be-all and end-all of the answer. Increasing part of your margins is, is one way of make, making a business more a viable enough to pay a higher minimum wage. The example is Miko Coffee versus Z's because Miko has a few really high margin things going on in that store. And Therefore, they're a more resilient business than some of the others. So and this is all good. Like You're good at five so. years. It takes five years to achieve profitability, often as an average. Okay. And there's a good reason for that. I mean, so some businesses are more. Is this what you wanted to bird walk to? Yes. All right. I have bird walk. I have bird walk. Bird walk. Bird walk. Is it time for our executive It is. Executive executive executive. Executive. Yeah. Let's. This transition. So we're not talking about the transition now. Oh. oh, yeah. Well, well, yeah, I guess it <laughs> that was, was the best thing to talk about. about. Oh, thank you. So Juneteenth, I love Juneteenth, but here's my concern. Do we want to make it before this council turns over? Mm -hmm. Think about, we don't need to answer it now, but think about how can we put this in perpetuity, kind of like Cinco de Mayo, mm -hmm. um, that we continually funded, either out of council contingency or do we try to put it into the budget? Um, because it is a very successful event. Mm -hmm. And um, if not, they're going to have to come back every year to a different council. And yeah. if they have a different mindset, they may not want it. Except for, let me just clarify, the pieces of the sponsorship that you all approved, mm -hmm. that puts Juneteenth on the list. Mm -hmm. For, for the rest of time? <laughs> what is that existence? For those pieces, and I can't recall them off the top of my head, you might, Shakiti, word that out. So the, the sponsorship, those pieces would follow no matter the cost, but okay. event. So the okay. stage and having. You have to do that every year. You're on yeah. the list. Right, and yeah. the use of Roosevelt Park and, um, or any city facility, mm -hmm. and also the trash. Um, okay. So yes. that part, yeah. So council pays the first year in the sponsorship policy mm -hmm. and the council contingency, and then, mm -hmm. then we budget then for the pro the next year. Okay. So mm -hmm. that becomes supported in perpetuity, okay. in part, yes. at least. Okay. Unless the council comes back and says so that we don't want change, to change, we're right. changing. So they right. have to make a concerted effort, right. effort to overturn. Okay. I I didn't understand that. I mm -hmm. thought that. So you only come to council contingency for things above and beyond the cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know the first year, yeah, I, there was nothing. I started it from nothing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My paycheck. Yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. and so then you all supported let last year and then this year. And okay. So, um, yeah. Whew. Thanks. Okay. Well, thanks for that clarification. That was a quick discussion. Yeah, we were out of time.
We are, but I don't see any attorneys here. All right, Harold, am I supposed to, sh you're gonna join a different team, Molly's gonna log in, right? Yeah, they need to be, will you let them know? Yeah. Or are they anybody out in the hall? There are people in the hall. There are. We will grab them. Yeah, I've got to get off of this one. 